Joining us now is writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, fabulous to have you back. Harry's defamation case is back in the courts this week. Some media has pitched it as a bit of a win for the prince and others say he's lost some skin. So what's the story? So the high, high Court judge in this case ruled that the case can actually go forward. So we obviously know that this, this case that Prince Harry has brought forward is um, in conjunction with a bunch of other um, uh, people as well. So Elton John, um, Elizabeth Hurley, uh, and they're all claiming that the Associated Newspapers are actually uh, engaged in illegal phone hacking and um, illegal activities to actually gather information uh, about them. So the win here, quote unquote, is the fact that the, ju the, the case can move forward. Uh, the, the huge kind of loss in this case is the fact that the judge ruled that um, information that the Associated Newspapers, so the, the publishers of the Daily Mail, for instance, um, released during the Leveson inquiry um, back in uh, 2011, I believe, cannot be used in this case. Now, that's a huge blow in the sense that it was, you know, basically one of the only records we know of any sort of testimony um, that the Associated Newspaper has, not necessarily of confessing that they've engaged in phone hacking. Obviously, they deny that in this case and any cases um, of the past, but actually confidential information regarding how they've gathered information uh, around certain public figures. Um, and from, you know, Prince Harry's earlier testimony this year when he was being grilled um, by the Associated Newspaper's uh, lead barrister, he doesn't seem to understand how these matters work. He, he actually genuinely believes that all the information that was published about him was, was obtained via um, illegal phone hacking. And the, the barrister really made easy work, like, like work of him, because he actually highlighted the fact that a lot of the information that they got about Prince Harry was published by the palace. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, the judge does recognise this, I suspect, because he said that, you know, the, the, the um, claimants in this case should temper their expectations. So we don't actually know all the information that these, um, the, the claimants have um, to bring forward this case, but it doesn't look very positive, particularly um, after what we saw of Prince Harry being grilled by the lead barrister. Oh, look, there's plenty more to run on that one. No doubt we'll be coming back to it in uh, in a few weeks' time. Now, while Harry and Meghan are desperately trying to panel beat their image, they keep doing things which appear to run counter to that. This week, there's a report of another jaunt on a private jet and a $43,000 date night. The hypocrisy is stunning, isn't it, Esther? It is stunning, <laughs> considering Prince Harry is the patron of a charity that actually tries to uh, push for sustainable travel. So w God only knows why they decided to, to fly via a private jet um, owned by a Texas um, oil tycoon um, from, from California to Las Vegas when it's really a four-hour drive. Most people can make that um, quite comfortably. Uh, the reality is most people don't have a problem with how the Sussexes live their lives. It's the fact that they're so patronising and hypocritical um, towards the, the public. You know, they don't really seem to understand that the, the general public might know a lot more about these issues that we tend to engage with um, from our daily in our daily lives uh, because we don't have a mansion in Montecito. So for them to preach about sustainable travel, for example, and have the goal to, to travel to Katy Perry concerts by a private jet is just, it's, I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's not unsurprising given uh, this, this couple's antics. Yeah, definitely not unsurprising. Last week on the show, we talked about how Kate is the most active royal, and this week she's been out and about in camo. Can you run us through this story? Yes, yeah, so uh, Princess Catherine paid a visit to uh, the Welsh cavalry, um, formerly known as the Queen's uh, Dragoon Guards, um, who, which is basically known as kind of the, the foremost reconnaissance wing of the army. So it's not surprising that she actually wore camo because that is their specialty in the armed forces. Um, but she's taken over a role that was previously um, a role of, of the Queen Mother um, up until she passed in 2002. And you can really see her engaging um, with the, the, um, the soldiers in, in her, during her trip. She actually received a, a brooch from one of the soldiers which belonged to the Queen Mother uh, up until she passed in 2002. And this is one of the traditions um, uh, that we see a king's wife uh, tends to take on this role uh, in the Queen's Dragoon Guard. Now, this week, Prince William was in Singapore for the Earthshot Awards ceremony. Here's what he had to say. The last year has been one of great change and even greater challenge. A year in which the effects of the climate crisis have become too visible to be ignored and a year that has left so many feeling defeated, their hope dwindling. However, as we have seen tonight, hope does remain. The light of optimism is burning bright in our Earthshot finalists.
Esther, there was quite the myriad of A-listers and dignitaries, wasn't there? There were, yes. Uh, K <laughs> Prince William has the privilege of being surrounded um, by A-list celebrities, particularly when he has these initiatives that he wants to champion. I will say it was quite a contrast, um, him being at this Earth Short Prize in Singapore uh, with Prince Harry, be because he actually flew commercial and he banned all of his staff from flying private, um, which is, uh, you know, Quite, quite a difference from, from his brother, Prince Harry. Um, but it's amazing that he's been able to champion this cause. Obviously, environmental issues is close to his heart as well as his father. And he has actually uh, engaged a lot with local entrepreneurs and, and um, innovators in Singapore. And that's what this prize is really for, you know, to try and push innovation in, 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 uh, in the sustainability industry and see how we can find solutions for the future. Also this week, King Charles gave his first speech to Parliament. Uh, the Princess Royal again accompanied him as their gold stick in waiting. But what were your takeaways, the main takeaways from the speech? So the main takeaways from the speech is obviously very political. He's basically outlining uh, the government's plan for the next uh, Parliament. And he effectively just wrote what he was, he said what he was told um, to say. Um, he had a speech in front of him and he was laying out the Conservatives' agenda. So on the political front, obviously, it was very much uh, kind of the Conservatives' last hope to, to try and uh, win re-election. Um, I, do, I do remember one part of the speech where you, you could see it, it was it stuck in his throat a little bit when he was talking about the renewal of new oil and ga uh, gas licences in the North Sea. Obviously, we know that the king is very uh, environmentally friendly and so that's not something that would have personally gone down well but it is the agenda for the government and he had to be professional and show a sense of duty and not really react to how most people suspect he really felt about it um, but overall it was a good speech uh, it was very calmly delivered and he, he just he did his job just like he's supposed to esther kraku as always thank you so much for joining us we'll chat to you in a couple of weeks